Welcome to the brand new map Last Bridge in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 online battle arena between two great players in a good against good matchup with Condor versus Rohan. I mean, basically, Theodin is trying to revenge for the Westfold. Gondor opening with a blacksmith and a farm. He's going to capture these two settlements outside. And the goal of Gondor in this matchup is to defend the own settlements, okay? Rohan recruiting Mary, building two farms, recruiting two more additional peasants, and capturing this one in the front. Now waiting for the money to also capture this one. It's a beautifully designed, gorgeous map. Look at this beautiful water design. Holy! You have Goblin Creep around this location. Troll Creep around this location. Outpost. You have Ward Layer protecting this settlement behind. You have a Goblin Layer pretty much symmetrical on each side. You have an Outpost here, again guarded by the Troll Layer. And also behind, we have a Ward Layer protecting this settlement. I mean, no question asked. Peasants lose the 1v1 situation against soldiers, but in an ideal situation, there should never be a 1v1, you know? You can always outnumber your opponent because peasants can be spammed from the resource buildings outside. In Gondor, without barracks, can't compete with the spam. So I think you need to kind of decide which one you want to protect. It's quite difficult to protect both of them. If you try to protect both of them, you might actually lose both of them, you know? Are we doing a good job? But the peasants are dealing heavy damage to the farm. Great damage dealt. In the meantime, early stable coming for Rohan. Not too many peasants will be spammed. And he was also creeping this goblin there with the Hobbit, getting the money, which of course help you to get the stable up on the field way, way faster. Mary plus a peasant, level 2. This level 2 peasant will be super annoying to be dealt with for the Gondor player. Levels mean so much in this game. But for now, he's keeping it, but he might lose this farm over there. It's a 1v3 situation, too many peasants, you can surround the farm and attack it from multiple sides at once. Important thing here to micro is that you want to make sure that every peasant is able to attack, you know. The farm is going to be taken down. Soldier. Has still the heal available? No, he doesn't. And that means the soldier will be taken down, but there comes the Knight of Gondor. So one farm has been taken down, but I believe also the second farm is going to be taken down. By the time the Knights of Gondor will make it to the spot, the level 2 peasant hitting like an absolute truck. And also the Hobbit has been taken down. Now this Hobbit can cloak and block this... <clears throat> I'm sorry my voice. <clears throat> block the settlement for a very long time, you know. Trampling into the peasants, but also taking lots of damage from that trample. In the meantime, Rohan is also the first Rohirrim up on the field. We will get to see more and more Rohirrim and more and more Knights of Gondor. I mean, look at this waterfall. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, it's a beautifully designed map. Huge shout out to the Power Kartoffel, who is the maker of this map. He's also, he has also made uh, plenty of amazing maps for BFME 2. But unfortunately, you can't just copy paste them into BFME 1. So if you want to do that, you need to retexture the whole map. And that's kind of time consuming. And almost impossible for somebody like me, but he's quite talented in this matter. Ooh, be careful there with the Gondor Knights. Well, here are smashing because they were heavily damaged. Heal is still on cooldown for Gondor for the next few seconds. This creep has been taken down by Gondor player. That's pretty good. He's a level 2, nah, level 1 knight leading forward. Again, level advantage is massive in those skirmishes between horses. But he has heal now, he's gonna use heal, and Rohirrim have to disengage. So losing the units in BFME 1 is, you know, quite painful. In BFME 2, it doesn't really matter, but in BFME 1, you know, losing an early horse can actually be the ending of the game. So your units have more value. Oh, be careful there, there he got banner, oh my. Unfortunate, man, very unfortunate. Armory up on the field, um, no Eomarash, you want to get upgrades pretty much as, as soon as Gondor can. That's, a, that, that's something you can do against Gondor when you play Rohan, if you have a great start into the game. And there was definitely one of these games in which the armory from Rohan will not be much later compared to the armory of Gondor. I mean, Gondor is not armory, but you need to still invest a lot. And also the blacksmith costs more compared to the farms. 
Parami has been recruited, so I, be I believe he's afraid of a potential entrash, but that won't happen in this game. Rohan is going for the lead game matchmaking. Also, this round is going to be taken down, no problemo. Demolishing in time to deny power points and experience. Stable level 2 because he lost one of the knights. So he has only one knight as we are talking. And that's not going to be enough. So in a dream world, you want to have always the same amount of knights. Like your opponent has, you know, Rohirrim. But that's not always possible. The troll is going to now chase down this. Ooh, but maybe, maybe no. No, no. Imagine him being able to lure the troll into Faramir. There comes the warning arrow on the horse. They have heavy armor though. They don't take too much damage from the basic attacks from Faramir. Heavy armor in Forge Bleeds. That's quite impressive. Because Gondor has neither of these upgrades just yet. Because he's struggling map control wise. He has no money. He's poor. Um, and was just able to buy the Forge Bleeds. By the time Rohirrim got Forge Bleeds and heavy armor too. I mean, the damage with the Forge Bleeds is kind of illegal. They are hitting super hard. And Faramir, the captain of Condor, can use the warning arrow every 30 seconds to just one shot one of the horses. But if he basic attacks, you can see in the wedge formation, he needs to attack them like six times. And the Rohirrim are kind of weak. Ooh, but when they hit, get to hit you, though, the damage is kind of nutty. Heal, beautiful heal, actually. Faramir might be in trouble as if heal. Yes, heal. He needs to heal. And Faramir, the captain of Gondor, <laughs> will make it alive out. Okay, all creeps taken beside this troll here on the map, last bridge. And Rohan is making sure that Gondor is no way finding his way back into this game. He's pretty much out of the game. And his only hope is to stall because he has the power points he needs to get Ganath the Grey into the Ganath the White. Ganath is a game-changing hero for sure. But he's not even a thousand. So he needs more than five thousand. They have also Eoma. It's another lead game investment. Almost level three already. His spear throw dealing bonus damage to cavalry. We have the new farm. We have the new farm. And by the by the time uh, that's that's like the best case scenario. Because by the time Gana will be there on the field, Rohan will have like basically all upgrades, including fire upgrade from the archer range level two. And also, uh, he will have potentially like three, four, five battalions of Rohirrim archers with Eoma level four and Theodin leadership. Which, by the way, is like the biggest counter Rohan has under his control against Gandalf, you know? Heavy armor plus Forge Bleeds. We have new textures also in this current beta version in the arena. The official release of the version 4.7 should be done next Sunday in about a week. We are gathering lots of feedbacks to make it as fun, as entertaining, but also as balanced as potentially possible. Get over here. I mean, you can't really do anything about this level 3 and level 2 Rohirrim warriors. That's not possible. But I'm here. <coughs> I'm kept my voice. <laughs> but I'm is level 5. That's good. Irma is level 4. That's even amazing. And look what he's doing, you see? He's placing his Theoden next to his Irma as he's using the spear throw. This way he's able to share experience and get also Theoden to a very high level. Again, the power spike we are looking for is obviously level 4. Ooh, one more Knight of Gondor has been taken down with the great Alvin Summon. Amazing performances. Be careful, Faramir, the captain of... I mean, he's level 5, though. But the thing is, his armor leadership not really adding too much to the table. I mean, it's still good um, on his horses. Ooh, bad trample. They have leadership from Theodin, too. You might lose. He's going to use the heal. Run, you fool. Run, you fool. Barely was able to get away. Now, oof, the damage output is illegal from the Rohirrim Archer with double damage leadership. Now, we are talking about 40 plus 70 that's 110% damage leadership for the Rohirrim Archer army. And remember, you can also get Aragorn later on for another 50%. So you can get up to 160% damage leadership. All of that are able to addition, you know, add up together. 
to a number beyond your beyond your imagination or beyond standards you know <laughs> i hate to do this you know what i'm saying okay big army over there and basically you are in prison you are in jail you shall not pass Wizard you Ross shall not enter when he means to. but we have the great wizard it has to be good for something okay now we have pretty much Ganav against Rohan that's a huge army no more heal available remember that one he's on the hunt he want to go for a blast but Rohirrim they are just able to disengage from this location no problem for them they are going to the outposts in which they are even stronger so committing to this fight would not maybe the, be the best idea Ooh, careful there again oh, look at the damage output half health taken in like less than three seconds and Gondor is using the momentum he was able to kind of create through the existence of Gandalf to reclaim some of the map control that's very important now you need shields that's also very important the shield upgrade because it will increase your durability against fire so you can stand against Rohirrim arches a bit longer look again you see sharing experience with Thurin and getting closer to glorious charge which basically will make the Rohirrim archer able to stand and tank the incoming wizard blast from Gandalf just tank it outpost control with double out uh, double statue which also grant you 10 percent hero bonus making your heroes cheaper Aragon from 3500 will drop down to 3150 it's 350 resource save only from two statues you can build up to four that's the maximum amount Oof, the spear throw again the same situation putting Theodin close to him half a level needed only I mean the only good thing here for Gondor is that he has also Faramir leadership right it will make the army a bit more tanky because also Gandalf is providing armor leadership the oof oh he actually blasted oh my god this blast was so crazy it almost destroyed the buildings over there kind of crazy dude look at the villagers poor villagers struggling over there you know Ooh, he was kind of forced to use the heal on the level 3 Knight of Gondor. That means he has no more heal available for his Gandalf. Paramir getting a bit invisible around the trees, but look at the damage output! Okay, so very good situation here for the Rohan player. Performing incredibly well in this game. Ooh, that was a beauty, man. That was a beauty, beauty, beauty. Gandalf is still a troublemaker. And Rohan has to kind of bring the fight to them. So first of all, what you need to do is, I think you want to get Aragorn at bare minimum, and even potentially Legolas. Legolas also a hero counter. Gondor in the meantime going for the marketplace. For the Iron Ore, which makes more sense because he has five Plexmove in the base. And he has also one, two, three farms outside. No, it's not bad for Gondor. His study will be used to kill one horse but that's what you want to do right play it slow every minute you can use your e study over and over again and again i don't know it's going to be quite helpful he's also going for the grand harvest and you want to always get this one as well that's pretty cheap and also super effective in almost every situation you can fight this they are just too strong Smart move by Rohan player to always keep some Rohirrim around the outpost. And Gandalf is level almost 7. Elven summon, uh, Anduri sword, the draft, and the heal. That means he has no Elven wood, which Gondor never used actually. Gondor has not been using the Elven wood for a single time in this game. That's something you can always do against Rohan, by the way. Kind of make the advantage over the cheap power point because Rohan has to invest two power points for that while you can only get it from one power point so it's an advantage for Gondor in this matchup and also on the terrain on your elven wood the enemy will have no leadership which means you can go always for a blast and then put land before the blast connects to just wipe out the army you know Paramiya oh my god oh my god Aragorn though Aragorn hitting super hard Ooh, 
Ooh, the blast can kind of knock them down on the ground, and it looks like Gennaf will be barely able to survive this. Oh my goodness. Close. Close. He was also kind of, um, uh, I believe, kind of gambling that the uh, spear throw won't kill him. He was able to survive with like one person HP. Because heal was available. So what's the follow-up? He's going for the traps. Um, but you could go for our combos, of course. Now you might say, but combos, what are they going to do against Glorious Charge? That's a very, you know, a valid question. But remember, you can always put some tower guards in between with the Forge Bleeds. And then in the Porcupine Formation, they will just wipe out the Rohirrim, even through the Glorious Charge. The tower guards are super tanky. And your army will also have leadership from Faramir and Gandalf. So they will have like 90% armor leadership. They will be quite beefy and tanky though. But their damage output is not going to be the greatest. Your focus should always be the heroes and of course also the Rohirrim archers. You don't want to waste time shooting at the Rohirrim warriors in the front. Because they have shields. No, they don't have shields yet. But they might go for the shields later on. Which will... Uh, they won't go for the shields if you have no fire arrows. But the second he will see you making combos, he will go for the shields too. There is a triple leadership for the Rohirrim army. Rohan is a um, strong early game faction, but even stronger late game faction. And that's the strength of Rohan in the super late game boys. Look at the army shining bright like a diamond, hitting heart and becoming immortals through the glorious charge. And there comes the Entmut. What do you guys think about this map, by the way? Glass Bridge. By the way, the last bridge we are talking about is this bridge over there. It's broken too. The last march of the ends begins. The last march of the ends begins. I mean, the ends can keep their distance. They have the longest range in the game. They can even outrange, trebuchet, catapult, ballista. And their damage is illegal. You can also go for Tribeard to make them even stronger. The reason why he's so cheap is also because he's a hero. And the stage is giving you also the discount, you know? I mean, Faramir, few Trebuchet. Can this be enough to defend against such reckless seed? The end mode will be demolished. There is still a Ganna you need to take care of. Remember, the Glorious Charge doesn't last forever, you know? Beautiful shot from Legolas. You see the damage output is not too bad. What you could also do against Gondor is recruit Elma, Elvin, and also Legolas Gimli. And whenever Gandalf is coming close, you can use all the projectiles, you know, X throw, Hulk strike, spear throw, spear throw, on Gandalf and chunk him quite decently. I mean, the mission here is to turn the Gunner base into a Mordor base. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, they have not much time remaining anymore. With no much, I mean, they are gone. Trebuchet are still around. They are hitting very hard. There comes the Glorious Charge. Gandalf has to be careful. But it was a nice beat. Now Rohan has to make the best use out of this uh, Glorious Charge. Which, by the way, lasts only for 15 seconds. It's a very short duration. Because it's such a powerful ability on mobile units like the Rohirrim Warriors. It's still active as you can see and tell. But the second they will go off now, the ability is on cooldown. The Glorious Charge has an ability cooldown of 10, 2 minutes and 10 seconds. It's pretty short cooldown actually when you think about this. But it's also not the easiest thing to get Theodin to level 4, you know? Especially in a 101. He's gonna go for the workshop because it was destroyed around this location. Trebuchy are power point farmers, they are machines, they won't be healing up at the well, but you can use the heal from your spellbook to heal them up. Yanaf is level almost 7, now going to the outpost, the outpost, you need to demolish those structures, that's what he's gonna do. Now, because they do well, they are giving lots of power points to your opponent if you don't demolish them in time. But seeing Gandalf out of position, oof. I mean, the damage output is not going to be the greatest. You need, like, to hit ho multiple Hulk Strikes to kill the Trebuchet. The only one who can one-shot it is Gimli with the extra. Gimli's ability, as you can see in the description, deals bonus damage to Siege Weapons and Ends. So the Siege Weapons are the key here. It can one-shot Ballista, it can one-shot Catapult, it can one-shot Trebuchet. Every 45 seconds. I mean, I'm waiting still for a Juicy with a plus, you know, from Ganov. But it's hard to hard thing to do. It's hard to commit to this army with this much damage leadership. 
I mean, Rowan is playing it very slow and smart. I think that's what you are supposed to do. You don't want to just, like, pretty much just go in and hope for the best. Two power points after the Elvins. I mean, Anduril draft and heal for Rohan. And Gondor player has four power points after the Gan of the White, the Albin Wood, and the heal from his spellbook. That means he's only run about three power points away from getting to the Glorious Charge. I mean, not Glorious Charge, the <laughs> Cloud Preak. Oh, the blast. Big army. But as long as he can go and destroy like two, three trebuchet over and over again. Remember in 2.22, destroying trebuchet or any siege weapon really will give you also more power points, you know. So you will get power points from killing those siege weapons too. But he's even trebuchet expansion. I mean, the marketplace is coming in handy, of course, in those situations. Condor is still not very rich. But let's be real here. All he needs is 840 every... Um, you know, every 35 seconds, and he will have always money to do that with one, two, three, four, five, six resource building inside the castle. That should not be a hard thing to do. And Gondorin also, he has like decent map control still, you know, kind of being annoying, harassing all the time. And remember, he has both Iron Ore plus the Grand Harvest on his resource building, so he will get additional money. Has to cancel the ability. I think Rohan is also playing a little bit too scared because the regular siege weapons, they won't deal too much damage to your normal horses. So when you have like three, four battalions of normal regular Rohirrim with full upgrades, you can just tank the trebuchet shot for a long time. The main problem with the traps though is that they are able to knock you down on the ground, you know, that's the main issue there. He's gonna use the heal. Ooh, smart move though. I like what he's doing. He's getting in there and causing the enemy trebuchet to shoot each other, you know? Look, the trebuchet shooting each other, kind of destroying each other. He's going for the end mode one more time behind the scenes. Um, two and a half power points for the Cloud Break and two and a half power points for the end summon for Rohan. The last march of the... Ooh, what a shot! That's gonna hurt, boy. Oof, that's gonna hurt, boy. These are power points now you are farming from this, you know? The ends are not gonna burn permanently anymore. So this end, you see, he was getting rid of the fire. That's a change we also made to the 2.22. Just to make ends a bit more valuable against Gondor especially, or Mordor. Because they were so vulnerable against fire and they would just burn until death or until you get on the water. And not every map has a river you can step on, you know? Aragorn will be getting caught. Aramir has been taken down by the Rohirrim warriors. Full commitment. Gandalf is going for... Oh, boom! But they are still glorious charge, bro. Oh my god, he's so low. We were barely able to get away from the situation, but it was a winning fight for Rohan regardless. Five power points against almost seven. Boromir is important. It's crazy, by the way, against Rohan, because Rohan is Aragorn, and Aragorn can't be stopped with Anduri Sword plus the Blade Master ability. He's super tanky. And in order to kind of take him down, you need to disable him, crowd control him, CC him, you know, knock him down on the ground. And the only thing that can do that in Gondor is Boromir. Some people were suggesting, yeah, but uh, Aragorn should be immune to knockbacks, dude, then Gondor has no chance, because Aragorn will just simply walk in and take all your trebuchet down and walk out. With the combination of Blade Master and Anduri Sword, he will be super tanky too. That means nothing can kill him, not Easter Light, not Lightning Sword. And remember, he has also the healing from his Atelas, you know? He can use the Atelas to heal up like a quarter of his HP. I mean, three parts of the wall broken. Gondor is kind of poor. He can't repair them. And another end mode will be summoned. I believe this end mode is from this... From Yeah, these are permanent ends, actually. He was recruiting from the end mode. So they won't go away. <laughs> There's no timer. And you, your, your Gimli should be there, you know? Just to extra. Whenever it's available. 
Aragon is going to be sent in. Boom, boom, boom. Gimli, go. Yeah, Gimli, that's, what, that's your man, boy. The ends are burning, boys. That's a great catch on the level with the level 6 row hitting warrior. Blast incoming, level 8 Ganalf. Heal is gonna be used. Ooh, what a shot. Okay, Gondor has Cloud Break and Rohan has the potential in summon. But you wanna be smart about when to use the Cloud Break, you know? Cloud Break will reduce their armor quite a bit and also their movement speed, which will give you the you know chase and catch potential. But you wanna use it when the cloud when the glorious charge is off. That's very important thing to do. Dreebeard also up on the field. And the ends damage also improved against structures, as you can see and tell. That's a level 3 blacksmith, quite tanking usually. And he's going for one more end mood. He can also summon more ends. So he can have like, with these four ends, three beard, this end, and four more ends, he can have, what, 10 ends in total on the field. Actually, 9 plus three beard. Ooh, the damage, though. Map is looking pretty much blue to me. Gondor is, what, two farms outside? That's all about it. Glorious Shard is going to be used. Now full commitment on the trebuchet. And two more of them has been taken down. And also Rohan is going close to the uh, for, to the Cloud Break. Ganav has to be careful. Hard focus on Ganav. But now you want to use the Cloud Break and go for a blast there. He's not gonna use it. Ooh, beautiful actually, beautiful. But half of the base has been taken down and these blacksmiths will never reach level two or level three anymore. Two power points after the cloud break and Rohan didn't choose any power point yet. He's sieging slowly, smartly and but surely. Cloud break still on cooldown. That's a huge army against what? We have like one, two knights of Gondor, Farami, Boromi and Ganav and few trebuchet. The ends are taking some damage from the Knights of Gondor, but it's not a big deal. Also, Boromir get level 6, actually. That's like triple leadership for these Knights. You can see them glowing also like crazy. They have Farami leadership, Boromir leadership, and Ganav leadership. So they should not be underestimated in terms of defensive uh, powers. Farami using the one arrow. Boom, boom, boom. The ends are going to war. Boom, boom. Ends are taking down. Remember, they have leadership there. Cloud Break is going to be used. This one is from Rohan. And Gondor can also use it. Keep that in mind. Gondor can use it and go for a Juice Blast there. But is, does he have heal? Use heal? No. But he was a, it was a blast like in a half, boys. It was a great blast in a half. But Gana was the only one who was keeping Rohan away. And as Gana falls, so does Gondor. Rohan is victorious. And that's a tutorial video about how to deal with a camper. GG well played, I hope you guys enjoyed this, if you did, you know what to do, see you next time, until then, take care of yourself, keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards, peace out boys.